Hey, what's up people? Uh, today I want to take a quick look at the Giant Mouse Ace Jetland. Now, um, I'm trying to make some more easy to watch, uh, kind of quicker and more packed with information reviews uh, ever once in a while. I will still do longer videos uh, if the topic is, uh, is big enough so we need more, more length in video, but I think I can make some quicker videos as well now and yeah starting with this giant mouse ace jetland i have had this knife since the end of last year and i'm gonna be really honest i didn't overly use or carry it but i used it enough so i can give you a good 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 review about this knife um but just take that into consideration it was not a daily carry for me and I'm also not gonna keep this knife and I'm gonna explain to you in this video why I'm not gonna keep this. But first I wanna give you an overview uh, what this knife is. So this is like a 3.4, 3.5 inch blade length. So it's eight and a half centimeters. It's like a 20 centimeter knife overall. So um, uh, what's that, like eight inches? Something like that. I'm not too good at imperial system. Metric system is also much more superior just want to note that <laughs> I'm just joking actually I'm not metric system is the better system um, it only weighs 115 grams which is like 3.9 ounces and so it's relatively lightweight for the size and I think the biggest um, advantage of this knife is the nice and 3d contoured handle uh, and in this case in green canvas my Carter and um, yeah, the Mikado is really bright when you get it, sort of at like at this corner, and it darkens up from the from the oils of your hand relatively quickly. So this handle will only get darker over time, which is beautiful. I think uh, it looks much better this way than when it than out of box. So yeah, it's only it's only getting more beautiful. So you have a nice three D contoured handle that feels like more like a fixed blade than like a folder. It feels really, really good in hand. The handle design is also very simplistic in a way. And you kind of hold it in a saber grip. So the, yeah, you kind of, um, I mean, you can hold it in hammer grip, but this is really more of a saber grip knife. And so the, the kind of the blade sits at an angle, which is very comfortable for cutting actually. And I think you got a lot of good tip control in the back of the handle here, which is also nice. So yeah, the biggest uh, advantage of this knife is that it's very lightweight and very comfortable in hand. And then obviously you get this clip point, um, which starts out at about four millimeters in the back. So it's relatively thick, but then it comes to a really, really nice and pointy fine point supported by a long swedge. I obviously like that, if you can't tell. Um, and yeah, I like the, the Jesper Voxness designs that have a little bit more of an, a pointy point. I think a lot of his tip designs are more stubby tips. And this is kind of a pointier and slicier blade shape, at least in, in how it looks. So uh, yeah, I would, um, I would prefer him to do more of the pointier knives in the future as well. So I like that quite a bit. That's also the reason I bought this because I like, I like clip points quite a bit. And yeah. Um, quality of this knife. This is a really high quality knife. Um, it used to be like 200 euros, now it's up at 300. And it feels like a lot of the 300, 400 euro knives. Uh, yeah, it, it feels really good in terms of construction, how it's built, how it's done. The action is smooth. Um, yeah, I would say it's like a medium action. I just tightened the pivot so it's still a little bit stiff. But if it's broken in, well, the action is really smooth and mine is just a little bit tight now. Um, medium, medium detent, so it's not too hard, not too thin, uh, not too light. And yeah, you can spidey flick this knife, you can slow roll it and you can also open it like this. I think the flipper uh, still works the best and is my preferred method of opening, but uh, you have a lot of opening methods. So it's a fidget friendly knife. Uh, the liners are not titanium. These are actually a 420 stainless steel that's hardened. Uh, it's nice that they made the extra effort of hardening the, the steel of the liner so it does wear a little bit slower. 
Um, yeah, you can see mine is, has a secure lockup. I tested the lock strength of this liner lock, held up just fine. And yeah, it's a very secure and relatively thick for a liner lock as well. Uh, and yeah, I, I like these lockups much more than the really early lockups because they're, yeah, much more, this is a much more secure way, secure way of locking up a line lock. Blade comes also perfectly centered and um, what else? The bearings this knife runs on are steel bearings. I will show you a clip how it looks disassembled. Um, it's a very simple knife to disassembly and reassembly. You only have two T8s and then three T6s and it goes uh, the knife disassembly is super simple, super quick and goes back together also super quick. And yeah, I have no complaints there. Even though I disassembly my knives, not really that often anymore. I just wash them and clean them from the outside as best as I can and usually that works out just fine. But if you like to disassemble your knives, this is a good one to disassemble. Um, the, originally the GM8, the Giant Mouse 8, um, is what this knife is based on. They did it like a, a sprint run on the GM8 and it sold so well that they made a production run. And this is like, um, this is a made in Italy knife, like most of the Giant Mouse knives. I think it's made by Wiper. Um, and yeah, it feels like a Wiper knife and like an Italian knife because everything here is rounded off, crown spine, um, all the Italian stuff, the backspacer here is crowned as well. I think it's a titanium backspacer. And the liners, the backspacer, the clip, they are all bead blasted and then we have a satin finished blade and like a belt satin. So it's not a, yeah, not a hand wrapped satin, but a nice belt and satin and um, yeah, the clip, clip works well, goes in and out of the pocket, super easy. It looks very simplistic and it's also sturdy. If you think about a lot of the Spyderco wire clips, you can push these over quite easily, which I don't like, but these hold up just fine. You can't even push them in one direction. So they are, they sit here nice and sturdy. They are uh, attached through a T8 screw and yeah, super simple. Uh, I do really like the handle. It feels, feels so good in hand. And the blade, like I said, it's like um, eight and a half centimeters, 3.5 inches. It's kind of a medium sized blade and also kind of a medium sized knife. If you think about it, it's very comparable to like a Spyderco PM2, which also has a shorter blade along a handle or like a Spyderco Stretch 2. They are all very much in the same kind of sizes. If you compare the cutting edges of these knives, they're all very similar. And let's put these to the side real quick. Here is a Hindera XM18, also very comparable in terms of cutting edge and overall size. The Ace Jetland is just a lot smaller, uh, a lot lighter than an XM18. Uh, yeah, the the weight is really good on these, especially for the for the liners not being milled out. Uh, these are full stainless steel liners without any reduction in weight, but this knife doesn't need it. It's very light on its own. Uh, I wonder how they do that because that's uh, for a four millimeter blade. That's quite, quite an achievement. Here's also a Chris Reeve Sebenza out of my pocket just because I carry this today. Uh, so you can see the Sebenza is the large Sebenza is a little bit longer and a little bit more of my preferred size. I don't really like these in between sizes like the PM2 XM18 three and a half or Ace Jetland. It's kind of a weird size to me because the cutting edge is relatively short. If you compare that, this is a Benchmade bug out and has about the same length of cutting edge, just a tiny little bit smaller. And the bug out is just a lot smaller and lighter knife. So yeah, you have to like the, the medium sized knives like these. If you like a PM2, you will like the Ace Jutland because it feels a lot better in hand. If you like the XM18, you will like the the Ace Jutland also because um, this is basically the same size and 
yeah, it's not uh, not a small knife, not a big knife. I usually either carry a small knife with a big knife or just a big knife on its own. So this is this is kind of a size of knife that I usually don't carry. Um, so this is also the reason I, I sell this knife because I, I don't like this size. But like I said, if you like the in-between sizes, you're gonna be you're going to be happy with this knife because it feels really premium. Uh, did I say the price already? Uh, it started out like at like 200 euros, now it's like 300 euros. A little bit pricey, but it's also very, very high in quality, so I can kind of see it. Um, yeah, let's talk about the blade performance more. I think the blade cut really, really well. Uh, went through cardboard with, uh, with the factory edge, very, very decent. It cuts zip ties, um, the tip is really pointy, really stabby. It's very comfortable for for carving and cutting wood. This is marketed at like an at like a, as like an outdoor or hunting folder. I'm not sure if I would go hunting with like a folder that has bearings in it just for the sake of cleaning it. I think it will hold up fine, but it's just way too way too much work to clean a knife afterwards. So you have you would be much better off with a fixed blade, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I, this is more of an EDC knife, to be honest. And especially with the Elmex steel, Elmex is an okay balanced steel, I would say. It's high in edge retention, it has a little bit of toughness, and it's also high in stainlessness. But I would say it leans towards the high edge retention, high stainlessness more than the high toughness thing. So it's, uh, how, how is it comparable? I would say, it's probably higher in edge retention, in theory, and always depends on grind and heat treatment, obviously. But uh, in theory, it's it's at like S30B edge retention, maybe a little bit higher and a little bit tougher and also very, very stainless. But um, it's not super tough and it's not super high in edge retention like S110V or something like that. But yeah, it's a, it's a good in-between. I think it has like, uh, it has uh, quite a big carbide volume of molybdenum carbides. So it's, it's not the finest grain structure in terms of steels, but yeah, it's an okay. It's like, an, like, the, like the knife size itself. It's an in-between steel. It's good in a lot of ways, but it's more of a edge retention and stainless steel than it is tough. So keep that in mind. Uh, so you don't want to do a lot of the, yeah, these where you put a lot of pressure on the edge. The edge comes too few out of box, by the way. It's a nice and sharp edge and uh, I think LMX also supports the polished edges. If you like to put on like, uh, like the really high polished finishes, this edge should be fine with that as well. Uh, in terms of grinding, this knife is not the thinnest ground knife. I had it at like 0.5 millimeter here in the back and it all came all the way to like 0.65 millimeters in the front. Uh, I will recalculate that in Imperial system for you guys and blend it in right now. And um, yeah, it's not the thinnest, sliciest knife, which yeah, if you have a clip point, you know, with a nice and pointy tip, you also want a nice and thin grind. But most Italian knives are not too thin these days, uh, so it's a very, it's very much like most knives we see on the market. They have like high edge retention steels, but are not really thin in terms of their geometry, which is kind of sad. So, yeah, I don't know why they keep doing this. I would be, I would be way happier with a lesser steel, but a thinner grind. But that's just me, and yeah. So, I'm not sure if Elmex comes to its full performance in this blade just because of the geometry. Uh, I'll show you the box real quick before I end this video. This is the presentation, it comes in a nice cardboard box and then it comes in like this uh, canvas fabric thing and then you get a information card as well and that's it. So it's very, I think it's a very simple and effective way of presenting a knife. It's fine, I'm fine with it. And um, yeah, um, to summarize all that, I think it's a medium-sized knife. If you like medium-sized knives, it's a good one. Uh, it feels really high quality. Performance is good. I wish it was thinner ground. 
uh, materials are really nice the handle feels so good the material of the handle and the ergonomics of this handle i think jasper voxness is really good at that and uh yeah it's it's just not for me because i like bigger knives or i like smaller knives i don't like these in between sizes so yeah that's it that's my my summary of this whole thing right here thank you guys for watching and maybe we'll see each other in another video goodbye people